Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about self-taught developers. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I've worked with many different types of programmers. Why is it that self-taught programmers seems to do better than those with a computer science degree? So I'm not really sure. Like I'm assuming now that you have been working with is like developers who are at the junior stages because well this is just based on my experience I don't really see a m big difference in skill between self-taught developers and computer science uh, graduates when they have a few years in the industry usually it's only in the really early stages of their career where there's so like a you can see a diff like a real difference and then later on it very much depends on what type of studying they have done. It's actually funny because the self-taught developers are actually over time more likely to have holes in their knowledge than the computer science uh, students depending on how, what type of work they do and that is not because you know it has to be that way it's more about complacency and the person I talk to a lot of software developers uh, in different interviews and things like that who tell me like sort of what they've been doing and then you check their knowledge and you can kind of immediately, you almost get a feel for it, you kind of know, okay, yeah, I sort of know how his or her career has looked and like what sort of work they've been doing and I understand sort of like where the gaps are and things like that. And uh, so what I've always found to be the thing about self-taught developers and why you might, I suspect, think or feel as if they're doing better uh, in the, at the very least in the early days uh, and maybe even up to later stages as well is because a self-taught developer usually goes in from a different angle when they are learning software development which is the hands-on skills, which is the actual tooling, things like that, which is not always the thing that the computer science students are getting because they focus on the theory in their courses, usually more like core programming concepts rather than, you know, just building things, which is what the self-taught developers are doing because most of the content on the internet is related to building things. It's not theory-based, it's, you know, workshops or tutorials, things like that. And so, the, those things are the things that actually produces code, if that makes sense. It's the thing that you are going to do. Like you need these tools and you need to, and to know how to use them in order to produce working software. So of course, if that's the first thing you focus on and you learn those things first, you're going to be able to produce something that is actually tangible quicker. And that's uh, that's the difference between top down. I mean, I call it top down learning and bottom up learning. Uh, it depends on where you start. And self-taught learners usually do top down, and computer science grads bottom up, uh, depending on the school and so forth, of course. Uh, and short term, that works really well uh, if you want to produce quick results uh, doing top down. Uh, the thing that is important, though, to understand is that even if you were to go bottom up sooner or later you're going to reach the top and be able to actually produce with the tools of the trade. And when you reach that point, you have learned already, or you should have learned at the very least, all the theoretical parts of what makes up software development. And here's the thing that can happen to some self-taught programmers. Uh, they never get there because they get usually, this is the worst situation in my opinion, uh, and I see this all the time guys you have no idea how often I see this I would even go as far as to say that this more time I see it more times I see this from the self-taught developers then I do not see it from the self-taught developers and that is when they have made it into the industry like their first job or something like that some of them stay for the some of them are actually able to do this for years until they actually want to go and do something more serious in like a serious IT company and that's when reality hits them uh, so they get into a consultancy or agency or something like that where as you were saying like where the the focus for these people is on that the fact that you can produce software that is the only thing that matters to them in other words they were just they're just gonna check that you know how to use the tools and you know the right wording and like etc etc and so that there are some results because the people who are doing the evaluation are not capable 
of figuring out how what a good software developer looks like. Now, this is the greatest problem in our industry today. This is where all the mismatching is happening. This is why all you should never trust a consultancy. You should never ever do anything besides having your own like informed process with senior level software developers who help out with the hiring, all of this stuff. Because the average person who is not a almost master level programmer, they will not be able to tell the difference between someone who knows how to get something out the door and someone who will do it well. It's sort of like hiring a builder. Like uh, some, uh, if you can't evaluate what a good, you know, a bricklayer or whatever, if you don't know what good work looks like, well, you, it's no wonder when the thing falls over from a small gust of wind. And it's the same thing here. So a lot of self-taught developers, they stop their learning when they get into that first job and so forth because they're going to, of course, survival mode, which is very natural. I did the same thing. You're just focusing on whatever your work is forcing you to do because you want to keep your job, your livelihood, etc., etc. And then after a little while, uh, you get into the same sorts of companies. And in some cases you might get rejected from some companies and so forth and you get into the next one that has the same thing and the the, the interesting part here is for a lot of that people don't realize is that the reason why you're getting slushed like you're like funneled into these sort the same sort of roles over and over is because you are acquiring knowledge in a specific area and you might be missing out on other knowledge so you organically get the easier route by just continuing sort of doing the thing that you've been doing now here's the problem with that if you lack within your role or within your knowledge good fundamental understanding of computer science and like polymorphism and all these sorts of more theoretical mental tools that you might need you will reach a point when and I've seen this many times senior level software developers who are worthless as seniors like they will never I, and I actually you should say that this uh, unfortunately we I can't recommend this person for a senior role within our company it doesn't matter that they have 15 years because I can hear from talking to them that they don't actually know how they how their own tools work they don't actually have the ability to teach a junior how to do their job because they themselves don't know and it's actually very sad I think that's is the scariest thing for a senior software developer to wake up one day and realize that oh shit I'm actually very I, I actually know a bunch of tools but I can't actually produce good software and that's why I failed the Google interviews and like all of this stuff because I don't actually know the other part that makes a strong software developer and that is like that you actually understand how to not just write code but how to do it well and that is the thing that becomes increasingly more important the more experienced you get and especially for when you want to work with as i said real it companies or it companies where they actually know how to check if you know your stuff and that's not every single company and that is the i think usually the big danger of self-taught developers it can help it same thing can happen with computer science students in many cases i see the computer science students struggle a little bit in the early days because they're only focusing on what their school wants them to do and they don't do a lot of tinkering or like only their own projects which can make it difficult sometimes to get started because as i said it's that's the short that's the that's the thing that is value building for you, to, especially in the early days, for you to be able to just produce something. And so it's really important, guys. I, I cannot stress this enough. You cannot treat one or the other as better or worse. You cannot, you know, ignore building and tinkering things just to focus on the theory. And you cannot just learn and take courses and like uh, learn the tooling without making sure that you understand theory and like how to write software well both are necessary in order for you to become like a master level programmer and i promise you it's sort of like working out and you, you know cheating on certain exercises that you don't really like your end form is just going to end up poor uh, rather than if you just did it well to begin with 
So what I want you to take away from this is that usually what I find people say things like this, that self-taught developers might be better off, is because I suspect that as a self-taught developer you're usually quicker on the uptake of tools and like actual technical hard skills in being able to just produce something. And in the early days that's what matters because nobody has an expectation on you to be a master level programmer. They just want to see can you build something and then that the code isn't really good, that's okay because it's not expected from juniors at the very least usually. They it's not that common, right? But it becomes increasingly more important the more experienced you get. And that's why it's very important to not neglect the fact that there are two parts to begin being like a technical person. One part is to understand how do I use the tools, how do I produce the thing that is requested. And the other part is to understand the back, like the underlying theory and all the mental tools that you will need in order to do it really, really well. Because in the early days, your products and like the tasks that you are given might be very simple and you can kind of sort of just figure it out with just the basic understanding of, uh, uh, of your tools. But I promise you, when you get to be to uh, at the level where you're going to have to do some really, really hard stuff, this is where you, you really need a history of theory behind you because it's going to be almost impossible for you to stack overflow away that problem. Have a great day.